Hey guys, what's up? Top Shelf Technology here. So here's the thing. Most people, no matter who they are, at one point or another wrote something like this. Now, the problem with this code snippet is that this code snippet is not as effective as simply writing a list comprehension. First of all, it takes up four lines of code. It needs two layers of nesting, and overall, it just makes the code more complicated to read. Now, compare what I just wrote with a list comprehension. So, for example, a list comprehension will look something like this. I say x is equal to, and then I type i, say 4i in range. And here I'm filtering so that I only get odd numbers as a result. So as you can see, if we check X, we have the same result that we got with the previous example. But in this case, as you can see, we did this all on a single line instead of having to rely on multiple lines to do the same thing. Okay, so if you haven't used iterable unpacking to unpack variables, you're missing out. So for example, if I write something like this. In this example, I unpack the string test into a list. Every character of the original string is now an element of this list. There's a trick where you can unpack the first and last character and then discard the rest. So for example, I can do something like this. I can say first, and then I can say rest and last and i'm going to assign this to test so what we see now is if i check first i can see that first has the first character from the string and then last has the last character and and rest has the characters which are in the center so the rest this is a kind of handy if you need the first and last element from a collection. You can easily mix and match however you want to unpack your variables. Okay, next up, let's try this with a for loop. So what I can do is I can make a new list. So I can say L is equal to, let's just make a tuple here, X, Y, and Z. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over, let's say, 4X in range 10. And I can also iterate over y in range 10 and i can say for z in range 10. and let's check our l and as you can see we have a whole bunch of uh, numbers in here now what i can do is i can actually iterate over these with a for loop so i can say or and what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard the first element from the tube from every single tuple that we get. I'm going to discard the first element. So I'm going to say underscore. So for the first element, I don't care about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack the other two elements into the variable rest like this. And I'm just going to say in L. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out rest. And as you can see, what we did is we basically discarded the first element we didn't use it and we created a new list from the remaining two elements in that tuple. We can also use iterable unpacking to pass several arguments to a function. So for example, okay, so we have a lambda expression that takes three arguments and it returns just x plus y plus z. That's simple enough. So let's imagine I have a tuple. So I'm going to say x is equal to a tuple with three numbers. So one, two, and three. Hit enter. And what I can do now is I can, well, let's let's take a look at this naively. So naively, if you wanted to pass this x into this lambda expression, you would do something like this. You would say f, and then you do x, and then 0, and then x, and then 1, and then x, and then 2. And that works, but it, it looks kind of, it, it looks kind of verbose. So what we can do instead is we can just simply do this. We can do star x, hit enter, and we get the same result. So the next thing I want to talk about is f-strings. And here's the thing, use f-strings if you want to mix variables with a string. 
So for example, you can add the two strings together and get a new string no problem. So let's say I have, let's say I have string and then I add the string to let's say another string and that's perfectly fine, who cares? But if you try to do the same thing with a number, so for example, if you say five is equal to and then add like a five or if you want, you can say x is equal to five and then try to do the same thing with x. As you can see, that gives you an error. So to fix this, what we can do is we can use f strings, and we can use f strings like this. So what you do to write that f string is you add the letter f, and then you're gonna type something. So I'm gonna say five is equal to, and then we're gonna open uh, these um, curly braces, and we're gonna pass an x like this. Then let's close this, and as you can see, we got back a string five is equal to, and then five. Perfect. So if you want, you can also do some formatting with F strings like this. So imagine I want every number I print out to take up at least three characters. So if I print out, let's say the number one, I only have a single character. So let's say I have F and I wanna print out the number one. As you can see, that's just one character. So what I can do in this case is I can print the number one and format the string so it takes up three characters. And we do it like this. We say, we put a colon back here and then we put, let's say, some character that you want to format with. And then I'm gonna say greater than and three. Hit enter and as you can see, now what we get back is we get zero, zero, and then one. And believe it or not, but this kind of formatting does come in handy from time to time. Now, for example, if I print out the number 999, hit enter, as you can see, it basically fills up the whole thing. So if you iterate from, let's say, from zero up until 999, it's perfectly fine. So it'll always take up three characters regardless of how big the number is. If I want to make sure that every line always takes up at least like 24 characters and the thing I'm printing out is in the center of it, what I can do is I can say, okay, so let's say I have 999. I can, let's say, give it a different character. So instead of passing in a zero, I'm going to pass in like an underscore and I'm going to use the caret here and I'm going to type in 24 here. So as you can see, so there are 24 characters on this line and the variable I printed out is square in the center. Uh, we can actually even check how big this line is. So if I do len, as you can see, it's uh, 24 characters. And if I make this bigger, so if instead of printing out 999, I print out, let's say 999, and then another nine in here, and I hit enter as you can see, just so as you can see, it keeps the number centered. Okay, so one of the most powerful features of Python is slicing. For example, getting the last element of a list can be done either like this. So, well, actually I need a list first. So I'm gonna say x for x in range, let's say 10, hit enter. Let's save this into a list, say x. And as you can see, as you can see, we have a list x that goes from zero to nine. Perfect. Now, let's say I want to get the last element from this X. So since we know this list has 10 elements, what I can do is I can say, okay, so give me the element at index nine and we get the last element. But imagine you don't know how big your list is. Well, in that case, what you would do, well, naively, what you would do is you would say something like len X and then minus one since it's an index. Hit enter and you get the last element. Now, instead of doing this, what you probably should start doing is you should start using slicing. And what you can do is you can just get the negative element like this. You can just say negative one, hit enter, and as you can see. So basically what we did is we got the last element from this list. If we want the first element, we would just type something like this, zero, and that gives us the first element. You can also reverse the list like this. So you can say x and then two colons like this, and then negative one, hit enter. As you can see, we reverse the list. Uh, you can do the same thing with strings. So for example, if I have a string like this, I can reverse this string simply by putting two colons and then negative one, and then hit enter. And as you can see, we just reverse this list using uh, the slice notation that Python provides. So yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I will see you later.